When I was a kid, I walked across the Mississippi River. If you have seen the Mississippi River, this may seem impossible. But the Mississippi actually begins as a relatively small stream from Lake Itasca in northern Minnesota. Then, the channel travels down 2,552 miles, picking up water from other rivers, streams, and groundwater along the way. This is why the whole river holds up to 5.2 million gallons of water until it all pours out with a flow rate or discharge of 593,000 cubic feet per second into the ocean through a delta. Knowing that a small stream can become such a large and fast-moving body of water is truly a testament to how variable rivers and streams can be. But it poses the question, what happens to the river along the way, and what makes other rivers different? Alluvial and fluvial environments are highly variable and difficult to generalize due to the wide variety of associated environments as well as factors that determine the shape, velocity, and location of each river or stream. But before we get into those factors, we should first understand what I mean when I say alluvial and fluvial. Although there are multiple definitions, usually fluvial is a generic term referring to all rivers and streams. Whereas alluvial environments apply specifically to rivers and sediment deposition from rivers that come out of mountainous regions and tend to fan out, creating alluvial fans. Most river channels travel through three zones. Although this is the typical path of a river, not all rivers will go through all of the zones. All rivers, however, need to begin at a water source, usually from the source zone, also known as the erosion zone. In the first zone, water is sourced from a lake, melting snow or glacier, or even groundwater. Then, it goes through the transition or transfer zone where the streams are neither depositing nor eroding rock at high rates. Finally, in the depositional or floodplain zone, most of the deposition occurs on the edges of a river, on the floodplain, or finally into the ocean. Although water comes from the source zone, other factors can determine the amount of water in the system and the flow of the river. Rainfall can really determine the river flow and amount of water in the system. In temperate or tropical environments, the channel flow does not change very much. However, in areas with seasonal change, like monsoons or snowmelt, it can be highly variable. During wet seasons, flooding, high flow, and high river levels occur, while during the dry season, streams can be a very low flow or even dry up, creating mud cracks that could be preserved. In drier climates, although weathering produces the class that sit atop areas like alluvial fans, the transportation of those class rely on these large rainstorms that occur intermittently. Because alluvial and fluvial environments flow through and stem from many other environments, it has multiple facies associations, such as deltaic, glacier, or lacustrine environments. Alluvial environments also tend to deposit detritus into tidal flats, aeolian dunes, or ephemeral lakes. Alluvial fans are the most dependent on tectonics out of all of the fluvial environments because they rely on high relief to allow for the water and debris to form the fan shape. 
Alluvial fans stem from runoff of mountainous and inclined regions. The fan forms from the rivers that begin at the stem of the fan and continuously divide and rejoin with surrounding rivers. Because of the incline, the streams flow at a high velocity and therefore deposit poorly sorted, often gravel-sized detritus with slight bedding. Alluvial fans stem from runoff of mountainous and inclined regions. The environment can have either sparse vegetation or be in semi-arid regions. The fan forms from rivers that begin at the stem of the fan and continuously divide and rejoin with the surrounding rivers. Because of the incline, the streams flow at a high velocity and therefore deposit poorly sorted, often gravel-sized detritus with slight bedding. This sediment, once lithified, can become a conglomerate, also called a fanglomerate. There are two main types of alluvial fan. Debris dominated, which occurs due to gravity acting on the rocks of higher elevation. Due to the high viscosity of the debris flow, the result is coarse grained, poorly sorted deposits. Sheet flood dominated fans, on the other hand, result in fine to coarse, slightly bedded deposits. Vegetation, tectonics, climate, and the lowest elevation the river can flow at all contribute to the type and shape of a river. Because a river can flow through different environments that shape the river, these shapes can, can and usually do change as the river flows downstream. Knowing that so many factors can manipulate the path of a river or stream, it is not surprising that the rarest type of channel is straight. Although not impossible, straight channels usually only appear in sections of a river or at the base of a river. This is because straight rivers are highly unstable. Typically, as a river flows downstream, the river tends to become more curved or sinus, creating meandering rivers. This type of river forms in the transition zone, so it has a mixture of suspended and bedload sediment. Bedload sediment is sediment carried by rolling and saltation on the channel floor. This is a much more stable form of river, so it is found more often than straight rivers. This type of river tends to deposit sediment along the edges of the curves of the river. Braided, also called bedload rivers, are rivers containing channel bars, giving the river a braided appearance. This type of river deposits bedload sediments, which are sediments that are transported by rolling and saltation on the channel floor. Once again, this is a highly unstable form of river because it often forms in floodplains without much vegetation to hold the river in place. Sediment in braided rivers tend to produce small islands of sediment called bars. These bars are formed when sediment formed from gravelly material accumulates in the middle area of the river. Bars can be important to determine the direction of and type of flow. For example, longitudinal bars are elongated bars that develop parallel to the flow direction. They are made up of coarse grained, poor sorted sediment. Although there are many types of bars, for now it is just important to understand that channel bars are an important type of deposition within fluvial environments and can indicate the type of sediment and deposition that is occurring in that specific location. Anastomosing rivers contain multiple connected channels that are separated by floodplains. Although this is very similar to braided rivers, especially when just looking down from above, braided rivers must have channel bars that are covered when a river floods, whereas the anastomosing 
rivers do not tend to have mid-channel banks. Instead, is separated by floodplains. The stability of a river shape is highly related to the vegetation along the channel. If the river is surrounded by abundant, deep-rooted vegetation, the river will have a much more stable shape. In places like a floodplain, where vegetation seasonally gets washed away, the shape of a river is much more likely to shift relatively quickly. This process of rapid shifting of a river channel, called avulsion, can result in the preservation of river channel deposits. The floodplain, or overbank, is the area beyond the channels that only hold water during a flood when the water level exceeds what can be held by the channel. A river residing in a floodplain has a high chance of migrating a currently flowing active channel. If an active channel migrates, it leaves the remains of erosion and deposition of the abandoned channel. One notable structure that most people would not recognize as a fluvial structure is an oxbow lake. It is formed in similar processes as an abandoned channel. However, the remaining channel is pinched off, leaving stagnant water, creating a new lake next to the river. Oxbow lakes actually originate from a river that has gone through avulsion. Certain depositional features can appear and disrupt the flow of a river. One type of deposition is channel fill. Channel fills appear in strata as sheet-like bodies and is caused by sediment deposition while being transported through the flow of the river. Point bars are another form of deposition that deposit on the inner banks of meandering channels. Overbank deposits occur when flooding carries sediment over the edge of the channel into the floodplain or overbank area. Channel leg is another depositional feature that is a general sediment that accumulates through normal processes of the flow. The final depositional feature is crevice splay. Crevice splay is when the water breaks out of the normal path of the river channel and deposits sediment, almost like an alluvial fan. Although fossils are rare in fluvial and alluvial environments, an oxbow lake might be one situation where an organism might have a chance to be fossilized. Due to the flow of river channels, Fossils are usually rare to find. If you find any fossils, that usually is an indication of a floodplain or any situation where the water was forced to become stagnant. The most common fossils you would find in these environments are root traces or general plant fossils. Overall, alluvial and fluvial environments while being highly variable, generally form conglomerates, sandstones, and or mudstones. The river channels tend to form crossbedding and lamination. For paleocurrent analysis, the grains tend to form as unidirectional in the direction of the flow and slope. Knowing all of the factors that contribute to the shaping of rivers, hopefully the next time you see a river like the Mississippi, you'll think about what that river looks like at every point throughout time and throughout the entire channel. As you pay more attention to your surroundings, you'll recognize more about the world around you 
and what creates the rocks that you will go on to see throughout your life.